wanna touch your life. I wanna be the change. I'm gonna shine my light. I'm gonna make it. Good evening and welcome to Airtel Touching Lives Season 7. Consistency is an essential characteristic of a successful corporate organization because it establishes trust and credibility with customers, employees, and stakeholders. Airtel Nigeria is a company that reaffirms its commitment to empowering and uplifting vulnerable people by building communities and creating value for all its stakeholders. Airtel Touching Lives is an undertaking that requires commitment and dedication. That is what Airtel have done and shown in the launch of season seven. I'm Michelle Dede, your host, and I too am committed to uplifting the people of Nigeria. Touching Lives. Airtel Touching Lives prides itself in uncovering emotional stories of individuals or communities that have been dealt a difficult hand. With Airtel's intervention, we get to see how, with some help, we can change the status quo and their lives will never be the same. We look at how the help we gave to our season six participants has changed their lives forever. Let's take a look. Lives. Tonight, we pay a visit to Ahmed Ahmed, who is a sequel cell warrior that has been fearlessly battling sequel cell disease, a degenerative condition that he receives medication for on a daily basis. But due to his financial constraints on Ahmed and his family, Ahmed Ahmed was unable to manage his fragile health status. And our new story deals with albinism, a genetic condition that affects the production of melanin, the pigment that gives color to the skin, hair, and eyes. Individuals with albinism face various challenges, such as vision problems and skin cancer risks. Unfortunately, Due to the lack of understanding and awareness, people with albinism often face discrimination and social exclusion. So, <laughs> It is when we go to the hospital, we do some tests. The doctor let us realize that Ahmed is a sickle cell anemia. Etel wants to help you. So they are going to rent two bedroom house for you. Thank you, I'm very grateful to the Etel communication. They are going to give you 1.5 million Naira educational scholarship for your children. I'm very your grateful. Children can go to school. I'm grateful, thank sure. you. Okay. We have not finished you. Etel is going to give you 500,000 Naira to pay for medical expenses. We really appreciate, we really appreciate the Etel communication. Thank you so much. I don't know what to say. Thank you. As a young boy, all you want to do is play. It must be so frustrating for Ahmed Ahmed to watch his friends play and he has to be a spectator. Let's see how Airtel Touching Lives has changed his life. My name is Ahmed Soli Ayodele, the father of Ahmed Ahmed. Mm, the Airtel Touching Life I really thank them because they touch all my family's life. 
because Ahmed Ahmed is a sickle cell and a mirror. And the ether touching light pick Ahmed Ahmed and they help us a lot about his uh, health and the education. The Ahmed Ahmed is a somebody that I used to seek always and the money to cater for him and for the school. So it's not easy for us. So the Earth Touching Life help us in the area of school and even the medical line because we always carry him to the hospital and to get the money to his sometime is difficult for us. But by helping us through the Ete Touching Life, we able to pay the school fees and the medical expenses. My name is Ahmed Ahmed. I'm Suku Said Alemia. I'm 13 years. My favorite subject is mathematics. I like to calculate. About to play football, I like to play PS. Thanks to Ete Touching Life, that changed my life to this and the scholarship that is given thanks to it. They should continue to be helping others because the little they do for us, we really happy and appreciate it. And we have some people out there like that, that they need the help. So may God continue to help them too because the one they do for us, we cannot forget the healthy, touching life. By supporting me and my family, may Almighty God raise them higher and higher again. Thank you, Ete Touching Life. It's really amazing to see that Ahmed Ahmed can start to experience a normal life. Stay with us because right after the break, we bring you a story of a young girl that lets nothing stand in her way of progress. She is tenacious and feisty and you are going to love her story. To join the conversation as always and to interact with tonight's show, you can visit our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Welcome back to Airtel Touching Lives. Being born with a slight genetic disorder, like not having melanin, means that you have a different complexion. As Nigerians, we need to understand, however, that albinism is a genetic condition that is not contagious or a result of witchcraft, as some myths in some cultures suggest. We should also acknowledge that people with albinism are just like anyone else, with their own unique personalities, talents, and abilities. Let's take a look at our beautiful, charming Eunice Mokocha's story. I had challenges in school. I had challenges after school. Getting a job was very difficult. I don't know if he was actually the manager of the place, but he came out and like, Oibo Pepe, what are you doing here? You can't, you can't even read this. Please, I don't, I don't think you can fit here. And I gave my response. You don't know me. I've not been interviewed by you. So how do you believe I am not competent for the job? I actually walked out of the place because I felt very sad that I have not been interviewed. My potentials have not even been you know, explored and I'm already being asked out. My name is Eunice Uchechi Mukocha. I'm 33 years old. Being a person with albinism comes with a lot of challenges. We are faced with low vision. Mine is that bad that I have to read like this. So when people see you, they're like, why are you doing this? This is part of the effect of uh, lack of melanin. There are uh, different types of albinism. So some have just their hair color, which is brown. Some affects the eyes, some both the hair, the eye, and the skin. So growing up while in primary school, and when I come back, I'm so reddish, I'm so sunburned, and I'll start crying, but nobody knew what was the problem. Um, they'll just beat me, apply some kind of powder, 
and after a while it goes down and it happens over and over again. I didn't know that that was actually uh, serious. Then I had an outgrowth on my head. It started just like a little pimple, but gradually it busted out and was spreading. And we referred to the National Hospital and the surgeons told me, my dear, you have skin cancer. This has to go immediately. I've been treated for skin cancer seven times. Now I know better. I stay off the sun as much as I can, wear protective clothes, use sunscreen, use a hat, use an umbrella when I'm going out in the sun. The journey through adulthood was very stressful, very painful, and the experience is something I wouldn't want to recall. But now I can freely talk about them because I actually created the atmosphere for myself, understanding my challenges. Nigerians naturally looked at um, Abino people as um, people that are now strong, um, people that always need help. Definitely you have, you have a stigma. There's no doubt about it when you go to mix up with other children. Um, I had people calling me different names. They call you a fortunate European, they call you Ibo Pepe, they call you all sorts of names. We are also being used in some countries, like in Tanzania. Some persons with albinism were used for rituals. Some, some of them are being raped, that they bring wealth. All these are myths about persons with albinism. All those things makes one to hide in their shell, to be hide in their cocoon. And some of the persons with albinism I have met as an adult are all timid and shy because they are trying to run away from the society. The society is not giving them the free will to explore their potential. Yes, it's harder for them because most of the work in Nigeria, they will tell you, you need to have experience. And these kind of people, people hardly employ them. So if nobody have given them opportunity, where would they get the experience from to even work in the first place? Me not getting a job actually pushed me into doing things for myself. So I decided to take the bull by the horn to learn cake making. I make cake, I sell them, and I was, ah, I enjoyed that. But at a point in time, I felt, Actually, this is not my calling. I like being creative. I like, I like something that uh, pushes me to actually do more. I got a friend who said, I've seen your profile on Facebook. I've seen some of the things you write. Why not apply for the Tony Elumelo Foundation grant? I was lucky and that helped me to purchase the equipment I have now. You know, to make foodwares and echo living for myself. Why I went to making foodwares is, I think everybody wears shoes. Everybody, even a baby wears a shoe. And for the women, you know, we like being exotic with our shoes. So I, I saw the footwear industry as being very creative. Sometimes you, you can actually manipulate something and come out with a very beautiful design. And that's what I look forward to, to have a brand on for myself. Actually, the name is Dainty Eunice. Dainty, special, fragile, is kind of, you know, me. I'm an advocate for persons with albinism and for persons with disability so that we can be able to have a normal life like every other person. When I was a kid, I only found myself like this. So each time I asked my dad what happened, my dad would not my dad would say I should go and ask my mom. If I ask my mom, my mom will start crying. So that is why I stopped asking them. We need to stick together to be able to push our voice out there and be heard. My dream for Dainty Eunice is a brand that is widely accepted locally, internationally, and empower persons with disability. I see a business where I could be creative. I see a business where I could teach, train. And here I am, an economist, 
a graphic designer, a bead maker, a shoemaker. Yeah, being your own boss can be very sweet and tasking at the same time. She's a kind of person that doesn't allow anything to deter her from what she wants to achieve. She's, she's a hustler, she's a fighter. Well, uh, definitely, like just as I said, you know, if it's a personality, I am always proud of. She is such that you give her any, any job, anything, she will do it to the, the best of your knowledge. Very much inspiration. She is so much inspiration to us. One of my neighbors saw you knees on air. She was like, is this not your friend? I said, yes. He said, uh, I, have, um, I have somebody of her skin that is hiding at home. She needs to watch this. She needs to understand that your um, skin color doesn't determine who you should be. So I am trying to tell everyone out there that persons with albinism can live a normal life. They can do anything that they are capable of doing as long as you have the intellect, as long as you know your onion. You know what you want to do, go ahead and do it because there is no limitations to persons with albinism. such a beautiful and inspiring story and inspiring woman. You'll be meeting Eunice after the break. We'll be right back. To join the conversation as always and to interact with tonight's show, you can visit our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Touching Lives. Welcome back to Airtel Touching Lives. Joining us in the studio tonight, we have Eunice Mokocha and her friend Oluchi Ongukwe. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. How are you? I'm Hi, Mom. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening to you too. We watched before the break. We watched your your inspiring and beautiful story of not letting anything stand in your way. Touching on on the subject of albinism, when when did you first notice that people started treating you differently, friends, peers? People started treating me differently right from primary school. Um, at least when I can tell that I could understand so many things. Um, from primary three, mm -hmm. people actually were making jest of me. I was a fighter mm -hmm. because I don't like people calling me names. Sometimes they will walk around you singing, saying all sorts of things, calling you names. And because they see you sometimes uh, bringing books close to your eyes or mm -hmm. sitting in front of the board, they come and make jest of you like three o'clock eye and all that. So I started understanding that I was a bit different from others, just the skin color. Yeah. But it didn't stop you? No, it didn't stop me. Yeah. I, I actually like being among the first. I like being excellent in anything I do. We can see. You can see that you're excellent in everything that you do. Yes, and I think that started from family. Family made me comfortable in my skin. My mom, my dad, my siblings never treated me differently. I was treated like any of my siblings. Mm. If you do wrong, you get smacked. If you lie, you get smacked. Mm -hmm. So I, di I didn't feel that I was different in the home. I only felt I was different outside, outside, of, the home. outside of the home because people try to, who, don't, who do not understand that the difference between you and I is just the skin color. Mm. Now, how did, how did both of you meet? We actually met in church. Oh, okay. Yes. Are you saying as well? Yes. Oh, lovely. I do. So you've been friends for how long? Hmm. Well, quite a long time. You can't remember. Probably up to 10 years or <laughs> more. That's a long time. It's more than that. It's I met her, I, met, I first met her in 2006, but um, there was no link at all. I think we started building relationship from 2012. Okay, I see. And what has it been like as a friend of someone who has albinism, you've, you've seen some of what Eunice has, has been through. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Being a friend to Eunice is just like any other person. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything wrong with her skin. Of course, because there's nothing or, wrong. Yes. She's my best friend, actually. Um, the most important thing about her is the way she takes things. She wants the best. She's ready to give in her best to achieve the best. And that is what's So irrespective of yes. what you've possibly seen her experiencing, you've just seen Eunice go through it yes. with the feisty nature that she has. Yes. Okay. She's, she's ready. She doesn't, the, the skin doesn't stop her. I love that. 
I love that. I love that about you. I think a lot of people will be inspired by that, those with albinism and even those who don't have albinism. Now, you also mentioned in the clip that we watched that you advocate for people with albinism and disabilities. What has that experience been like in your community? Um, I think, first of all, when I joined the Albino Foundation in 2006, mm -hmm. we're actually the pioneer members of the Abuja chapter. Okay. I came to understand that persons with albinism they were hiding in their cocoon. I was one of the spokespersons for them. I was the most outspoken among, amongst them. And I was like, no, if I could come out of my shell and be free, I think 90% of my friends are not persons with albinism. And they wonder how I managed to interact with them. I see myself as normal I see myself just like any other person. I'll just tell you it's my skin color. Mm. So I saw that they were timid, they were shy, they are facing challenges, but they cannot speak. So I used myself as a yardstick mm -hmm. for the things I've gone through, going through uh, skin surgery for seven times, going through rejection, discrimination. I felt, no, nobody should go through this. I know what it feels like going under the knife several times. Mm -hmm. and. I need to advocate for persons with albinism. And later on, I joined some clusters that were not just persons with albinism because the UN actually categorized persons with albinism as persons with disability yes. because of the visual impairment. Okay. We have low vision. Yes. So I interacted with most of them and saw that we're facing the same kind of circle around us. So I decided to be part of the race to stop the discrimination among not just persons with albinism, but with also persons well. with disability. That's very commendable, Eunice. Very, you. very commendable. Thank you. Thank you for all of the work that you're doing. We love your determination and your feisty nature. Airtel applauds that. And because Airtel Touching Lives believes in giving back, we would like to give back to you. We have several prizes for you. So I'll just let you know the first few. One will be a scalving machine. The second, a cutting machine. And the third, one industrial shoe press. Wow. <laughs> How are you feeling? It's, it's, I can't explain. I've been looking forward to expansion. Yeah. I've been looking forward to something that can uh, enable me not just expand, but employ, yes. train. Oh, and these fantastic. are tools that could help me do that oh, because fantastic. the manual nature is really telling on me and I can't do much with empowering others with the manual yes. machinery. So dainty, have. dainty units will be growing in leaps and bounds, we hope. Yes? But that's not all. There's more. We have more. One industrial filing machine. One generator set. And Airtel will purchase all the requested materials and open a smart cash account where the funds will be assessed to purchase additional materials for you. Do you, do you know what smart cash is? It's, it's a smart cash. Smart cash is a mobile app that Airtel has where funds can be put in and you can also use it to pay for purchases as well. So it's like a mobile banking app. Yeah. That's not all, Eunice. We have something else for you. <laughs> One year rental of a shop in Wuse Market. Wow. Like, this is more than I expected. Like, more than. It's okay. It's okay. Congratulations. Thank you, Etel. You deserve it. You do. You deserve Thank it. you. You're welcome. I'm feeling more overwhelmed. I can see that you're happy. Yes, I am. And emotional. It's okay. It's okay. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you so much for all you do. And I know that you're going to do even more. And we cannot wait to catch up with what, what you end up doing months or even a year from now. Okay? Congratulations. Thank you. It's thank been great you, having Etel you Etel Lives. This is, this is really amazing. And I don't know how to express that. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. It was great having Eunice and Omki on the show. I hope that you've been inspired by today's episode. Those who are watching who have albinism and also those who don't, this is a woman who has decided to let nothing stand in her way, irrespective 
of her disability or not. Be inspired by that. Next week, we visit the Irede Foundation to see the incredible work that they do by giving young children artificial limbs, thereby enabling access to education and with it, the ability to live self-sufficient lives. And in our featured story, an incredibly motivated young man that has a love for education. Despite his disability, he acquired a diploma in education in order to make an impact on the youth. Despite being visually impaired, he established an academic center in the city of Ibadan. Don't forget to tune in to next week's episode and his incredible story. Good night. Touching lives. I wanna touch your life. I wanna be the change. I'm gonna shine my light. I'm gonna make it. Airtel, a reason to imagine.